started playing badminton at four years old, which I know is very, very young. Uh, but really, it was because my parents were members of a tennis and badminton club, which is just around the corner from my house. And they used to drag me along to whenever they were playing club evenings or playing with their mates. And obviously, at that age, I started to probably get a little bit bored. And uh, I was like, I want to have a go, I want to have a go. So they cut down a racket for me. And in between matches, they just kind of chucked some shuttles for me. And I used to try and hit them back. And for me, that's how it started. Um, a real family-based kind of activity. And the fact that the Bounty Club had a junior club. So when I was old enough, I joined the junior club. And it, it was it was about playing with my mates really, playing with my family, playing with my mates and because it was just around the corner from my house, a real community sports hall, that's how I got started. When I was at school, I didn't actually play that much badminton in school. I was just loved every single activity going on. I actually, think, looking back, how the hell did I do so much sport at school? It was like before school, lunchtime, school lesson, and after school, that was me. I did sport, um, swimming, hockey, netball, athletics, tennis, a bit of badminton. Um, for, I think I tried to, to, uh, to form a volleyball team, but I didn't have many people. I even tried to form a cricket team, but only two of us turned up, so that wasn't very good. Um, but yeah, you name know the sport, I was there because I just loved it. We were a very good hockey school, so I did lots and lots of hockey. Um, and we, it was all about hockey. I must have played hockey about five times a week, actually. And then after school, after the after school practice, then I'd go and play badminton. So I don't know how I had the energy. <laughs> I really don't. I think I did more sport then than I was a professional athlete, but hey. I think I began to realise that I was pretty good at badminton when I was about seven years old. Um, the club entered me in an under 11 county tournament just to see how I would do. So I was seven years old and I was playing against 10 and 11 year olds and I went and won. <laughs> so uh, I think they were beginning to realise that maybe I had a talent and I think that's where my uh, confidence uh, soared in badminton and I was like, yeah, I can take on anyone at badminton, you know, even adults, I think. Uh, but I think. I never really set out to be an Olympian or anything until I was probably about 15 or 16 years old when badminton was an Olympic event for the first time and then I thought, Do you know what, maybe, maybe if I train quite hard, maybe one day I could be an Olympian too. Um, I chose badminton basically because I think from such a young age I was always quite good at it. I could have chosen hockey, I was a very good hockey player, not to big myself up or at all, <laughs> uh, but our school was very good and probably about 12 or 13 I had to really choose whether I was going to be a hockey player or a badminton player because I was at the kind of same standard. Um, for me I just thought badminton because I think it was probably closer to my heart, really, because I've been, you know, it's part of a family thing, and the the sports centre which I played at was just around the corner from my house. Uh, it was, and I think probably because I got more glory. I know that sounds silly, but it was just me. Whereas hockey, I had to share it with the rest of the team. <laughs> um, but I always still played hockey, even though that uh, I chose badminton to really specialise in, as it were, and do out, more outside coaching and tournaments around the country. Hockey was still a school thing for me, and I love the fact that I still play for school. We won national titles at school, at the school level, so, um, and I still play now, hence the scar, which I ran into the goalkeeper and got headbutted, and um, yeah, we won't say any more about that. To be fair, I was due a, due a scar, because I've broken two noses. My best mate's got a scar here, where I flicked the ball in her face, so I think uh, hockey, maybe I was a bit too dangerous for hockey. <laughs> I think I've already got told to go to play badminton. <laughs> Becoming an Olympic medalist, it changed my life really, well, it changed my life for the better completely. I mean, I got to do, I had opportunities to do things that I got invited to parties and TV shows and I met loads of famous people, met the Queen and go to the palace, things like that, you know, wow, you know, that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been an Olympian or Olympic medalist. So. But really for me, I think now that I've finished in Bampton, I think going to schools and showing my Olympic medal to people, especially to kids, and, and when they hold that Olympic medal and they're like, wow, I'm holding an Olympic medal, I think really for me, just, it just realises what I've done and what I've achieved in life and how much it, you know, other people, I can, I can give something back to sport and I can give back something back to sport and young people. Um, and... I think the Olympic medal sums up all the hard work and all the sacrifices and all the things that when the going was tough and you know I, I didn't think I was going to make it, I just look at that medal and thought, you know what, I stuck at it and I, and I got there and I think that's really important and I think that's given me you know, the attributes to go on to do whatever I want to now, whatever I decide to do. Okay, typical week when I was preparing for the Olympics was um, uh, eight from 8 o'clock in the morning, I was at that badminton centre and I would start off by doing core exercises and prehab. Then 9 o'clock, I was on court for two hours. I mean, I mean working hard, serious hard. I mean, coaches were just 
sending me here, there and everywhere. Then I'd have a break for lunch and a little bit of a nap. Uh, then I'd be in the weights, uh, and I'd be lifting some serious weights or squatting or doing circuits, something really, really hardcore. Then I'd have a little break, then I was on court again, practicing my skill. And then after that, we think it's all finished, but then I'd have a massage. Now, when I mean massage, I don't mean these nice little tickly massages. I mean elbows and me screaming massages. And then I was in the ice bath, and I mean screaming in the ice bath. Uh, so my day was 8 till about 5, 5.30. And then I'd probably do some video analysis on my opponents as well. So people think that, oh yeah, she's just playing a little bit of badminton every day. No, I was there from 8 till about 5 o'clock, and it was six days a week as well. So I'd only have one day off where I would just not get out of bed. Now, <laughs> my life is a little bit different. I'm still working from 8 to 5, but with a baby now. So I have a little, bit, little boy called Harry, and he's four months old, and yes, my life and world centres around him. So, very different. Apart from badminton, I love watching all sport. The Olympics to me is just great. Two weeks of sporting heaven. Um, but I do love watching football. Um, my mum's a women's football for, footballer for England. She was centre forward in the 1971 Women's World Cup in Mexico. Uh, and she got me into supporting Tottenham Hotspur. So I am a Spurs fan for my sins. But uh, I'm really pleased the last season did really well. Harry Redknapp is a genius. And uh, fingers crossed we get into the Champions League and do really well. But I love watching all sport. All sport's great. Hello, I'm Gail Ems and I want to wish everyone at Thurby Community Primary School all the best on your sports day. Good luck everyone.